So Jacob had his sons, the twelve sons of Jacob. He had a daughter as well, Dinah. But it's the sons we're concentrating on because they're the ones who actually developed the family and allowed it to go on through the generations. His two favourite sons were the sons of Rachel, Joseph, um, Joseph and Benjamin. And of the two, Joseph seems to be the most important as far as he was concerned. Because as they lived, it is said that Jacob made for Joseph, or had made for Joseph, a very special garment. It, we're not quite sure it was a garment of different materials, different colours, but it was obviously the garment of the person who was going to inherit. Jacob was quite sure it was Joseph who was going to inherit from him. Remember Isaac blessing his children? Well, in the same sense now, uh, Jacob was blessing his sons. And he says, it isn't my firstborn that's going to bless, be blessed. It's, my, it's Joseph. I'm going to pass the blessing on to Joseph. And that's why I've made him this special garment, which is obviously a multicolored garment, and we told it had long sleeves. In other words, this was not the garment of a worker, of a manual person. This was the garment of a prince. But this, Je this Joseph was also a strange person. You know, you often wonder why God chooses certain people. We can't tell. He's, he's like the great chess master who can see uh, moves far in, in, in advance. And somehow he chooses certain people and blesses them in a certain way. And God already knew how he was going to use Joseph in the future. But Jacob has these two sons. And Joseph, well, as I said, he was a strange lad. Because he would go out amongst his brothers, almost boasting, you know, with this um, colour, multicoloured coat with the long sleeves. And he would say, you know, I, I had a dream last night. Yes, I had a dream. And I, I dreamt that you all bow down and, and worship me. Oh, he must have been the most popular person. And what's more, when he went back and saw his father Jacob, he would tell them, tell him about which of the sons was doing the most work and which was not doing the work. He was a telltale. He was doing that as well. A strange person, you know, in a sense, uh, is probably Reuben you would regard as being the person you'd want to follow, not this Joseph character. But then he had another dream. He said, I had a dream, you know. It wasn't just my, my brothers who were bowing down before me. It's my father and my mother as well. They too were bowing down before me. They, they, all the peoples were bowing down and worshipping me. And his father said, Just don't keep talking like that. You're causing annoyance amongst your brothers. But he still honoured Joseph and he still wanted him to be the head of the family. And then, of course, the story goes on that the other brothers, well, they take their sheep out to find pasture. And his father says to Joseph, go and see what's happening with your brothers. Go and find out where they are. And as they, the brothers look up, they see Joseph coming towards them. And they say, here comes this dreamer again. Uh, what can we do? Because Joseph, Jacob is going to bless him. He's going to give everything to him. He's going to honour him in this way. And they say, oh, let's deal with it once and for all. And they do. First putting him into a pit and then selling him to people who were passing, who were going down to Egypt, selling him as a slave. And this too was a common practice that families could do this. They could take members of their family and literally sell them into slavery. And this is what they do. They take Joseph's coat, and they dip it in some animal blood. And when they get back to their, family, their father, they say, you know, you sent out Joseph to look for us. Well, we found this coat, and it's all covered in blood, but we, we, we couldn't find Joseph. And Jacob says, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm not sure what's going on. I think he was a bit suspicious because for later on when the boy, these young men have to go down to Egypt, he won't let them take Benjamin with them. He says, no, I'm keeping Benjamin here with me. You're not, I'm not going to let Benjamin into your captivity. I've got a feeling you've done something with Joseph and I'm going to look after Benjamin and I'm going to keep him here. Well, the story moves on. 
Joseph is sold into slavery in Egypt. But you see, God's plan works out. First of all, he's sold as a slave in Egypt. But then later, he's imprisoned. But in prison, he gets a dream again. He had these dreams. And the dreams are finally given to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh realizes that this is a man with great ability. You remember Daniel going to Nebuchadnezzar and interpreting his dream? Well, Joseph also seems to be interpreting dreams to Pharaoh as well. And he warns him of great famine coming upon the land. And because Pharaoh realizes this young Hebrew slave has this particular ability, he in fact promotes him until he truly becomes prime minister of Egypt as he looks forward, gathering in wheat during the years of plenty in preparation for the years of famine which are going to follow. Joseph, who had come from this family in Canaan, was now, in fact, the prime minister of Egypt. We can follow this story again tomorrow.